these rollers gradually reduce the dimensions of the billets until eventually they emerge as rods. The artisans working the changeover of the billets from roller to roller are amazingly dexterous. Notice on the entry side of the rollers the provision of an automatic feed apparatus, which never fails. Two thousand feet of rod pass through each minute to coiling containers. The hot rod emerging from the last roller is led into the container, which rotates and coils its load. It is now necessary to cool the rod, which has to be gradually done, and so the coils are taken to decks, where they are left until cool enough to cool. After cooling, the rod is treated, pickling as it is called, to make it ductile and suitable for the drawing process, which actually draws the rod into the screw-making machine. Here is a store of coils after treatment, and ready for the first of the three main processes, that is, heading the screw the subsequent operations being nicking and turning and worming. The heading machine, which is cut into lengths, and the head is cold forged. The machine does its work at dazzling high speed, and if one machine working all out is not quiet, what must be the mass effect in this heading room when all these wonder machines are doing their food with the utmost enthusiasm? The blanks now have heads, but working at such a rate, even the best of machines sometimes turns out a bad screw, and they are carefully inspected and any faulty blanks discarded. And before undergoing the second operation, they are cleaned in shaking barrels, each scratching the dirt off the other. Now for the second operation, nicking and turning. The headed blanks are fed automatically from hoppers into the spindles of the machine. Watch the uncanny, highly efficient fingers which place the proof into position, repeating this movement with the utmost accuracy. You will notice that the first operation turns the proof, and then the fingers take it over for the next cutting process, which nicks the head for the screwdriver. Glancing over this section of the plant, one again gets that thrill of amazement at the sheer wonder of it all. Now we get another cleaning up. The blanks having been mixed and turned are washed and brushed up before they go for inspection by these efficient young ladies who screw, 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 screw. And now the third and last operation, screwing. Again, the blanks are automatically fed to the spindles, whereupon they are wormed, the thread being cut, as you will see, before the uncanny fingers again get to work to remove the finished screw. One could watch all day the screw being carried out. Nothing fails. Blank after blank becomes a complete screw and is removed to make room for another screw. Further cleaning of the finished product is followed by further rigid inspection, and there can be no doubt that the high reputation of the British screw is secured by the intense inspection of the product throughout its process of manufacture. What a wonderful spot.
three acres of automatic machines all doing their jobs to produce screws at the rate of millions a day. Screw, screw, screw. And now all that remains is the packeting and dispatch. Small screws are packed by weight by quick-fingered girls. The cartons all being made in the same factory. Large screws are skillfully placed and wrapped and labeled. From this factory, all the world is served with screws which are manufactured from British materials. Every process from ore to the finished product being British throughout. <laughs>